today on Living Streams. Marriage is not possible or workable where there is no peace. Forgiveness is not forgiveness again when it's not given on time. Whatever makes you repeat the past of your spouse all the time is a satanic spirit. And now to the word. I'm talking about God's wisdom for marital peace. God's wisdom for what? Marital peace. Marital peace. Marital peace. God's wisdom for marital peace. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10. Only by pride commit contention. But with the well advised is wisdom. Amen. Give it to us in um, NLT. New Living Translation. Pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Pride will lead to conflict every time. But those who take advice are wise. Amplify. Amplify. By pride and insolence that usoyen comes only contention. But with the well advice is skillful and godly wisdom. Someone say, Lord, give me wisdom. Let's read good news. I want to read as many translations as possible. Arrogance causes nothing but trouble. <laughs> Arrogance causes nothing but what? Trouble. It is wiser to ask for advice. It's wiser to do what? Ask for advice. Give us NIV. New International Version. Pride only breeds quarrels. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Give us Bible in basic English. BBE. The only effect of pride is fighting. <laughs> but wisdom is with the quiet in spirit. Message Bible. Arrogant. That is know it alls. Arrogant know it alls. Stir up discord. But wise men and women listen to each other's counsel. That's wise husbands and wives. Listen to their counsel. May the Lord bless the reading of his many word. From many translations. In Jesus name. <laughs> So I cannot begin to explain to you how important and very highly crucial peace is in marriage. Some say peace. Let there be peace. Jesus said when you enter a house, declare peace because most houses don't have peace. Too much contention. If there is any place where peace must be priced very highly is marriage. Anywhere you want to price peace highly is marriage. Marriage is not possible or walkable where there is no peace. <laughs> Marriage without peace is hell on earth. Rewind. Marriage without peace is what? Hell on earth. You, uh, you didn't have peace in your marriage. You die as you pass on. More hell waiting for you there. Hell on earth. He, you, no peace at work is not a problem. No peace uh, uh, in, in your neighborhood is not a problem. But no peace in your marriage. Abba. Sha, da, 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 da. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Marriage without peace is the worst nightmare that can happen to anybody alive. The worst that can happen to anybody. The problem is what makes a marriage slip into a state of peacelessness and restlessness? What happens? What are the kind of things that provoke and promote lack of peace? God is saying very clearly that pride is the highest suspect. What did I say? Pride is the primary suspect. So people will tell you, I'm not proud though. I'm not proud though. You are not proud till we marry. You, till, till you marry. You are not proud till there is contention. Then we see your behavior in that contention. That's when your pride is revealed. Or that your, your lack of, or the fact that you don't have pride is confirmed. Hallelujah. So wherever you see strife, 
wherever you see contention, you may want to quickly question pride. Pride is, the, is at the root of the cause or the root cause and pride is what is also sustaining it. When a quarrel or a problem is not going, suspect pride. There must be pride somewhere that is always responsible for strife and contention anywhere. Always pride. Why do nations fight? Pride. I can't take it. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. The person is shouting, let's go to war. He's not the one that will fight. Though. It's people's children. Let's go to war. And youth can be very stupid. Youth, are you with me? Yeah, are you with me? Yeah. Your mother is saying, I will go. I love my nation. You are stupid. Come back. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Receive grace today to drop your pride. How do you know pride is on ground? And that's how I'm ending. Now, how do you know pride is on ground where there is a problem? Number one, in case you don't know whether there is pride, I will give you symptoms of the presence of pride. One, when no one admits their fault. No one is admitting their fault. Not me, not me. No, no, no. I am right, I'm wrong. No, no, no. I'm not wrong. You are the one that is wrong. No, I'm right. You are the one. Hey, when no one is admitting fault, for every family problem, blames are shared. It is hardly 100% one person's fault. Sometimes 10% at least is from the other side. Number two. When apologies are scarce in the house, proud people don't apologize. That's one way to know them. You don't need any revelation. You don't need vision. Proud people cannot say sorry. Sorry is poison in their mouth. Are you hearing me? Uh, the best thing I'm not proud. But come on, I am sorry. Three word medicine. I am sorry. It, it cannot come out of your mouth. Pride has killed you. It's a barrier that is remaining. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Especially we men. All men say amen. amen. You know we have our pride is, is level. Women don't have pride. Their pride is junior student. Yeah. Women, our pride. <laughs> Number three. If as I'm seeking this thing, I'm shaking your table. Leave the table, let it break. God will give you another one. Number three. When couples play tit for tat. You do me, I do you. Vengeful spirits. I asked you for money, you refused to give me. Near me this night, my was in your wood. <laughs> I'll kill you. If you touch me this night, I'll kill you. You say you kill me? You won't do I'll go and touch prostitute. No! Go and touch prostitute. Go and punish you there. One woman said, This one you are going to meet women. Miami, they will bring you back with HIV. Believe me, they brought the man with HIV. She told me, I prayed for the man. God healed the man of HIV. But she told me that, Pastor, I am the one that said they will bring you HIV one day. After the HIV was healed, another matter came up. That one could not be healed. Maybe the man did not learn sense. You know some people, you heal from here, they put it like here. Heal them here, they put that like They can never be free. Praise God. I said praise God. Number. What was number three? The plate for that is. Every mistake is paid back in full. In full. If it take two weeks. Is it please forgive me. Remain one week. I must finish my payback. Let's go to number four. When forgiveness is hard to offer. Your pride is on ground. Pride is on ground. Why won't you forgive somebody? It's not because the pain is too painful. It's pride. Finish. It takes humility to forgive. It's pride. <laughs> I forgive you. This is what you do to me. <laughs> the 
the man will refuse to eat food. Just because to eat the food will mean he has forgiven her. So he won't eat food. Men, such a wisdom is not of God. It doesn't make sense. It's your house. It's your wife. It's your food. Then you get angry. You will not eat. As how? Me, I used to eat. Oh. You need food to have strength to be angry. <laughs> if not, I ask a call. I told myself, I will eat food. I never see my father one day angry and say he's not eating food. My father doesn't have time. He will eat his food and continue his anger. Praise the Lord. Now he's eating my food. Though. What do you mean? Eh? That's cheating. I'm the offended one and then I'm the, deep, I'm the hungry one again on top. Men, sorry for yourself. Eat food. You'll be strong. For more anger. <laughs> because as you eat the food, there is a healing that is taking place. You know that. And Satan doesn't want you to eat that food. Because you know, when your wife has made you angry, and she wants to she tell you sorry, she, the way she will summer the food and add mega mega, that is additions that are even not necessary. You will now look at it and say, all this. All this is why you just right to bribe me. Hey, uh, the navel sweet. <laughs> ah, oh my God. May God deliver us all. You see, a husband become a little boy again. See, he's, he's, he's not even sweet, Seth. Wife, when you offer such food, don't hang around. Go. If you are there, he will do shakara. As soon as you move out, he will eat the thing so she can cook like this. And she, <laughs> and she will not cook. They said, she will be suffering me all this place. I will continue my vexation. Mm. I eat the food. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Offer forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgiveness again when it's not given on time. It's not given how? On time. Jesus said, forgive 70 times 7 a day. When the disciples said, they say, Lord, increase our faith. Because how do you forgive like that? The truth is, forgiveness takes faith. You need faith to forgive. Number five. When wrongdoings of the past are constantly repeated. That is, either husband or wife have become accuser of the brethren. See, you are doing it again. That's how you went the other day. That's how you went the other day. That thing I told me seven years ago. And that thing happened. This is how you do. Every time you do, that's how you do the other day. It's not eight years ago. Constantly repeating the past. That is, you are not just proud. You are a slave master. You want to enslave your spouse to that wrongdoing for life. When will you let it go? Why are you always speaking on the past? Let me tell you something. Whatever makes you repeat the past of your spouse all the time is a satanic spirit. It's a devilish spirit. The Bible calls the devil in Revelation chapter 12 the accuser of the brethren. That is when you are a constant accuser. You are, is, that word accuser means devil. Diabolos. Diabolos. That is, diabolos is the Greek word for diabolic. That is you are devilish. The word accuser is diabolos. It's a prosecuting lawyer. That you are constantly prosecuting. Diabolos is diabolic. Demonic. Leave the past. Forgive your wife or your husband. Let it go. Forget it. The way God forgets your own. The Bible says he will cast your sins into the sea of his what? Forgetfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. How do you know there is pride? Finally. When every mistake gets you really angry small thing happen you will vex you will vex you will break the television or those who don't break tv they will talk they will talk they will open mouth say things unprintable things for one little mistake or one big mistake as the case may be can i tell you the hallmark of maturity when you can see a wrongdoing and do what 
leave it. It's not everything you must point out. See, there are things your spouse does sometimes ignore it. What did I say? Ignore it. You don't have to mention everything. You kill somebody. Don't mention everything. What is this? What is that? Your spouse wear clothes. Come on, draw your skirt. Why is the skirt high? They say, why are you this? Uh, Abba. The high blood pressure will begin. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I making sense here today? Can't be mentioning everything that goes wrong. My father was a very wonderful perfectionist. What did I call him? Perfectionist. I didn't understand the study of temperaments then. If I knew, I would have understood and my father better. In the study of temperaments, I know now my father was a melancholic person. That is, eh? My father was neat, neat, and neatest. As in clean, cleaner. As in our house. All of our house is house. We had a, a, a duplex of four bedrooms. Yeah. Four, four, four. So all our rooms are normal rooms. My father's room is hotel. You understand what I'm talking about? The girls' room, the boys' room, the guest room, they are normal. House room. My father's room, hotel. His bed, you can't see one line. For what? The bed is like that. When you see it, sleep will catch you. The bed is blessed. You enter his room as the Lord liveth, no sand on the floor. And the way he arranges his cupboard, if one thing moves, he will know. My father, ah, I wish he was alive now so that I will tell him I know you now. I know you who you are. Eh? His toilet, you can eat food there and be blessed. Oh, toilet is clean, cleaner, cleanness, cleanliness. So there are times, there are times he goes to work. I will just go to that room and say, see room. I will lie down on the bed. Just to feel important. But before you lie, know how it was. <laughs> if not, the Anang man will say, Adapa. You die. <laughs> I look at the bed, I will lie down and say, Chai! Papa, they enjoy you. Then I will enter the toilet. It's so clean. You will feel edified. You know that toilet where you stay, you, you, you hear from God. I will sit there and poo poo. Just to prove points. That my father. If he catch one paper on the ground, oh, oh, oh. He went to work since 8, 7.30. Came back and saw paper on the ground. You are finished. So we, the children, we became experts. You know those father that when they land, you take off. Don't hang around. My father was like, it was not his intention. No. My father loved us. Love us. My father is not. Some fathers are so careless. When you do bad, they'll tell you, I disown you. My father, disown who? If you like, he will beat you, box you. You are still my son. My father doesn't have that kind of time. But he didn't know how to control that side of him. And so he will come back. So when we hear his horn, first, when my father gets any new car, we study the horn. Blum, pim, blum again. Pim, blum, pim. Recorded. <laughs> Recorded into our medulla oblongata. And so, we will play, scatter the whole parlor. Play, 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 play. As soon as we hear, pim. Ladies and gentlemen. Cushion, enter, pa, stool, pa, center table, pa, this one, pa, 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 bam. We, we survey for the last time. We have slept. Not that we are trying to sleep. We have slept. Ah. 
What are you talking about? Is that people sleeping? For you to answer means you are trying to sleep. <laughs> Guess what? You know, all the house helps we get, we treat the house help like our sister. So we had one house help. We were playing, she too was playing. My mother warned her, this thing you are following these children. When their father come, you will see something. Till we had the horn, she didn't know. <laughs> what, she, <laughs> what she just knew was that everybody was diving. Arranging the parlor. And we took off siesta. She stood in the middle, my father caught her. Why is this paper here? Why did my father, my, my mom said, I told you. <laughs> we have slept. Having learned from my father, I've learned not to be like that. That spirit nearly caught me. And we come back and see something, just that I, I don't want to do, so I will hold it in my mind. I'll be very angry. But wherever there are children, things must be dirty. Or they were very normal. Because if there are no children, the house will be so clean. You yourself will say, this house can't it be dirty. So make allowance in your heart. Don't expect everything to be perfect. When you have too much high expectations, your heart will be constantly grieved because many of those expectations, people around you will not be able to meet them. You just be getting angry anyhow. Pastor David Biome said, he doesn't like the wall to be dirty. So, even right on the wall, please don't touch the wall. But even when he write, don't touch the wall, people will touch, they don't touch the wall. <laughs> so he said the thing used to make him angry all the time. So one day the Holy Ghost told him, why are you getting angry? Can't you buy paint from time to time and paint the wall? Say, let people touch the wall. He said, okay. So now people touch the wall, it doesn't get. Before they touch the wall, said, move your hand from the wall. Remember, wall is meant to be touched. Is that you know what I'm saying? Talk less of when they are children. They won't just touch the wall. Mommy, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord help you with pride. May the Lord take away your pride. Make your life simple. So you don't kill yourself. Eh? Even when you know you are wrong because of the pride, you don't want to say sorry. When the team be, when they now know you are very, very wrong, you go and buy you go and buy gift. Gift is not the same as I am sorry. Or especially us men, you know how to tell your wife. How are you? Are you fine? Is that I am sorry? I am sorry is a miracle word. It's a miracle phrase. He can heal the sick, open the blind eyes, raise the dead. Just I am sorry. Let me round up by saying this. A house, a home, a marriage where certain phrases are absent is a sick marriage. As a matter of fact, those two people, the husband and wife, they are sick. Number one, thank you. There is no thank you in the house. There is too much pride there. No appreciation. Whatever you don't appreciate, we depreciate. Two, I love you. Especially us men, we don't know how to say I love you. Wife will tell you I love you. Say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not the answer of I love you. <laughs> Everybody, what's the answer of I love you? I'm saying it because when I was cutting my wife, she would tell you I love you. I would say thank you. Very nonsense. You know, I, my father was a military man. That Barak, Barak and Ajegule spirit. What is thank you? I love you answer is not thank you. It is what? The worst are people from the village. Villagers, even though they are wearing suits. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm is what? Good money, you can't say. Mon. What is mon? Are you, mon? are you cursing me? Finally, the phrase that must not be missing is what? I am sorry. It should, be, it should flow in your mouth. It should be normal in your mouth. 
and you should mean it. I am sorry. Hope it is few points of mind. Succeeded to convince you. God's wisdom for marital peace. Deal with pride. And peace will be permanent. Deal with pride. And you will live longer. High blood pressure. Hypertension. All of them related with pride many times. You go to a doctor. He said, doctor, my blood pressure is going up. Doctor said, how did you know? Nurse, come and check. They check. And your blood pressure is going up. Doctor said, ah, what is the matter? Are you something worrying you? Is madame disturbing you? He said, so be, why are you asking? Because we don't know the cause of this blood pressure. This blood pressure is, is, is called idiopathic hypertension. Idiopathic. It is hypertension that has no known cause. You know, I'm a doctor by proxy. Just that I didn't attend classes. It's called idiopathic. So, the full meaning is idiotic and pathetic. <laughs> idiotic and pathetic hypertension. May you not have that kind of hypertension. Live life simple and you will live long. Welcome back. Welcome back. I know for sure without a doubt that something new has happened to you. The word of God coming into your spirit has caused a transformation. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're a backslider. This is a good time to get restored. Very simple. Pray this simple prayer with me and you will be saved. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I commit my entire existence to you. Write my name in the book of life. I vow to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, whether you feel it or not, a miracle of salvation has taken place. Locate the nearest living Bible teaching church. And if you are in New York, I welcome you to God's House of Refuge, number 80 Kodebido Street. If you are in Eket, locate any God's House of Refuge anywhere, Eket, Calabar, Equator, Quenet, and so on. But if you don't have God's house of refuge anywhere there, locate a solid Bible-believing church and tell them I sent you. Settle down there, get pastored, and grow from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Till I come your way again, same station, same time next week. God bless you, and have a great time.